It's day 11 of my Minecraft Redstone Challenge, and recently I got approached by a friend, and I was told to learn how a clock works. So, Noosie, here, here is how redstone clocks work. Now, Noosie may have told me to learn how a clock works, but I've known how redstone works this entire time. So, I'm just going to start off, and I'm going to show you how a clock works, Noosie, because I'm not sure you do. Okay. We're going to start off with the simple Ethonian hopper clock. The Ethonian hopper clock is one of the earliest designs in the game. And it, I mean, it is stupid, stupid simple. Like, th this right here is all that goes into an Ethonian hopper clock, plus the items. And then, of course, like a lantern if you want to make sure you're getting the proper output at the proper time. So, to show this off... I'm going to put some items in this and then talk about how long this thing works and, and just timing. The Athonian Hopper Clock has, has a timing of about 0.8 seconds per item. So I have gone in and I've put in 10 items into these hoppers. Now this means that over the course of those 10 items it will alternate from one end to the other end and back. So right now it's about 4 seconds over here and about 4 seconds over here. Now it's not perfect because the first item has a bit of a quicker jump to it but it's about eight seconds and it's about as precise as you're going to get on a shorter timer now this is obviously great but it is very much limited to the amount of items you can hold in one hopper and that's why the next two clocks came into existence now first off we have the multiplicative hopper clock this basically just pairs multiple of those together in order to get a much 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 longer signal these are fairly simple like I said you just put one of them together with another one over on this end and then when you have both of those set up in the middle you put your building block and two repeaters now this one has kind of a stupid timing equation that you have to work out because you've got a top clock and you've got a bottom clock. The timing equation is interesting because you, it, it's just a whole mess. You take the number of items in the top clock and you multiply it by two times the number of in the bottom clock minus one. Like that is a whole multiplication. And then you multiply all of that by 0 0.8, which is horrible, horrible, horrible math. But it comes out to a, a, basically a maximum of about 45 hours on just a two stage and you can continue staging these on and on and on so you can get some absurdly long times with more of them but those will require different equations that I'm not going to calculate out right now because I'm tired and we have another clock to do so now we have what is in my opinion the more useful of these two clocks the multiplicative hopper dropper clock now what is so cool about this one is that it takes the design of the other one but then swaps these hoppers for droppers and so by swapping those hoppers for droppers we can get a more consistent timing interval and when i say more consistent i mean more consistent the equation is just so much easier to calculate so you'll have one of them one of these clocks in the front here this one's usually your dropper and then in the back you put an Athonian hopper clock. Now this equation is way simpler. You're just taking the number of items in the hopper times the number of items in the dropper clock and multiplying it by 1.6. And that is the amount of time that it'll take to activate the whole circuit. That is the whole circuit cycle time. Are you happy, Nusi? I learned how clocks work. And that was day 11. I've been Caddyat. If you learned something, subscribe or don't. I don't care. I'll see you on day 12. Bye.